My name is Stephen Hirsch, and this video is going to be about strength and conditioning exercises for the wrist, forearm, and shoulder, particularly for folks who are training with single-handed swords. Briefly, my background is that I have an undergraduate degree in exercise and health sciences with a focus on training athletes for performance. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I work in outpatient orthopedic practice. And one of my specializations is specifically in returning athletes to their sport. I have also been doing historical fencing since 2006 and broadsword, military saber, and small sword since 2013. And I do this training at Athena School of Arms. In this video, I'm going to be speaking specifically about the strength and conditioning aspects of improving your ability to train with single-handed swords, improving your uh, resistance to injury, and improving your performance uh, with those kinds of swords, because the same set of exercises will help us with all three of those goals. I am specifically distinguishing the topic of this video, strength and conditioning, from any aspect of technical training. As we discuss these exercises, we are specifically distinguishing our strength and conditioning exercises from our technical exercises, also in the fact that we don't want to be using the exact same motions or the exact same uh, thought process. I don't want to think of my actions as I strengthen, as I do my strengthening exercises as being the same as my technical actions. I want to keep those as two separate concepts in my head so that my technical actions are not incorrectly influenced by my strength and conditioning training. All of this is under the assumption that you are also doing technical training and that your technical training should be done at a volume appropriate to where you are at in your physical development and that you should be aiming to incrementally increase your volume and the other characteristics of your technical training uh, to overall achieve your goals. Again, this video is just about the strength and conditioning components of how to do that. Furthermore, issues of how to increase weight and uh, adjust the exercises going forward, as well as things like target numbers of reps, will not be covered in this video, but they will be covered in the accompanying blog post. So let's get started with the exercises. The first exercise I'm going to suggest is simply what I refer to as stick wiggling. This is not my own idea. I got this idea from Matt Easton from Scala Gladiatoria. Um, I definitely want to give him credit for this particular exercise idea. The idea is to simply take a stick. This is three quarter inch rattan, which I think is a good starting point for this activity. And you're simply gonna wiggle it back and forth like this. This is it. So it's a small arc motion. Um, so I'm not trying to get like a full range of motion out of this. It's a small arc motion. I'm doing it with this quick snappy tempo to it. And in particular, I want to make sure that the change of direction at each end is done in a snapping out. So there is no pause piece to this particular exercise as I do my set of repetitions. When I count this exercise, I count it like this. One and two and so on. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up note is the way your hand should be as you do this exercise. So what you don't want to have is a very rigid, firm hand that doesn't move at all as you do this. Instead, you want to have your hand do this sort of motion here, where there's that suppleness that gets talked about in period sources, and flexibility, okay? The next exercise is simply going to be stick rotations. I'm going to take my same stick again, I'm going to hold my elbow in place, and I'm going to start from this position here, where the stick is horizontal, I'm going to rotate through here, aiming to get horizontal on this side as well. And I'm simply going to go back and forth like this. Okay? I don't want to do this exercise as fast as I can. Uh, the muscles and the structure of the joints means that doing this sort of thing as fast as you can at end range of motion creates an unnecessary risk of uh, injury. Okay? So it's just this motion here, this windshield wiper motion. For increasing the endurance of your shoulder as you hold your sword up, 
all right, in whatever sorts of guard positions that you make use of here. We're simply going to do uh, a dumbbell raise exercise. Uh, if you're familiar already with conventional uh, naming for uh, dumbbell exercises, this is a front raise and this is a lateral raise and neither of those are what we are doing here. So if I come on guard right foot forward because I fence right handed in a style with my right foot forward and I raise my arm straight up in front of me, similar to where I'm going to have my hand position for my guards, there is of course variation depending on your particular style. All right. Those variations aren't going to be important for our strength and conditioning exercises because we're specifically not trying to in detail match our technical execution. And so I'm going to lift my dumbbell up in this plane here in a thumb up position. Physical therapists have a term for this particular position um, and that's not straight in front and it's not straight out to the side. We call this the scaption plane. Right? So I would tend to refer to this exercise simply as scaption. And so if I stand facing you, the exercise looks like this. It is the case that some single-handed sword styles, especially those that use two weapons, such as sword and buckler, your normal stance is probably going to be a lot closer to something like this, in which case doing a standard front raise would be an appropriate alternative. Some folks may be inclined to think that a uh, lateral raise like this is the proper angle for doing their shoulder strengthening slash endurance exercise because of how profiled their fencing style is. I've seen a lot of different fencing and sword fighting styles before. I've been doing this since 2006, I've been doing martial arts since 1998. And what I can tell you is I've never seen a fencing style that is in fact that profiled. So this is my basic positioning for a front raise. All right. Now if I turn my front foot forward for a modern fencing stance, and I, my feet are still crossed like a T, like you would see a modern fencer doing on the piece, all right, then my shoulder, my opposite shoulder becomes visible in the frame, indicating that my torso is at an angle relative to my arm, and doing an actual lateral raise would still be out here relative to the position of my torso. This exercise is going to be wrist flexion with a dumbbell. So we're going to take a dumbbell in my hand here. Ideally, I want to be resting on a surface like this, but there are other ways of setting this up that'll work. And I'm going to simply allow my hand to come down, bring my hand up in a smooth control motion. And this is the exercise. From the side view, this exercise is dumbbell wrist extension. I'm going to start with the dumbbell in my hand like this, palm down, otherwise similar position to my wrist flexion exercise, and again, set up on a bench like this is a useful way to uh, make sure you're going to maintain good form as you do these exercises. From here, I'm just going to let my wrist down, bring my wrist up, up and down, as so, and from the side view. The stick rotation exercise can also be done on a surface like this, just as with the wrist flexion and wrist extension exercises, if you feel it's going to help you maintain the position. While this set of exercises is intended to be a complete approach for achieving the basic objectives of improving the physical preparedness and injury resistance of your wrist, forearm, elbow, and shoulder, it is still the case that a general strength and conditioning program, which includes basic exercises like lifts, pushes, and pulls, is going to do a better job of helping you achieve general health outcomes, injury resistance outcomes, and performance outcomes, and that the set of exercises here can be a useful supplement to that approach if you're finding that that's not sufficient. Uh, more information on that particular topic is going to be included in a blog post that is 
also linked in a separate blog post that's also linked uh, with this video. So that's the total set of the exercises that I recommend for strength and conditioning to help with your single-handed sword work. As always, I'm always happy to answer questions, see people's comments and feedback, so feel free to reply on YouTube or wherever I post this on social media. Thank you.